Welcome everyone to this episode of Discourse. Today, it's very exciting. We are reviewing Tommy and the Order of Cosmic Champions by Anthony J. Rapineau and Anthony D. Great. When life supplies 11-year-old Tommy Grant with some unfavorable circumstances, he retreats into the spellbinding order of cosmic champions. When he discovers that the largely successful animated program is holding a nationwide create a character contest, Tommy knows he has to enter it. But when Tommy's character design fails to win the contest, he finds his world crumbling from all sides. And there's only one way he knows to fix it. Only one question remains. In the final hour when you heed the call, the courage to give your all, will you stand or fall? <laughs> Sorry, I just couldn't help but just giggle because I feel like it's so Good dramatic summary. because it's like this little kid, but you know, it's like high stakes, man. Yeah. Life or death. Like he's really in this world. Yeah, imaginative for sure. Yeah. Because this kid, uh, Tommy Grant. Uh -huh. He's 11. He starts off at 11. He has a birthday, so he turns 12 in June 26, 1988. Just that book summary alone, it sounds intense, right? <laughs> this little 11 year old going through all these crazy thoughts, crazy experiences. So the book opens up with mm -hmm. it seems like a cartoon, right? I oh, was like, right. What, what's going on? Like, who's this Goligar and I know, who Masculon are these or Masculon? Yeah. And it was like, all right, this book it's, it's interesting. It's, it's obviously like a cartoon or something's happening in Something this with fantasy world. Yeah. And then you hear his mom <laughs> kind of character. Yeah, interrupting <laughs> this these yeah. characters interactions and they're like what's going yeah. what's going on? What and then you're pulled out of that fantasy world into reality where Tommy's playing with these figurines action figures or his mom pretending so it was an interesting start but from there on like you get to see Tommy's world with I this order of cosmic champions or OOCC as I call it I say double O double C but <laughs> yeah. it doesn't really matter yeah I love that opening because I was I was fine with it I was like oh okay we're just going straight into like fantasy stuff you know but then I was like, wait, what's happening? When the dialogue started to change, like there was like yeah. someone else inserted. And I'm like, what? what is that? <laughs> oh, and then it dawned on me. I was like, oh, he's pretending he's playing. That is so amazing. <laughs> I just loved it. I loved yeah. it. And, and that's a good start to the book too, because he likes to imagine his characters talking back to him, mm -hmm. but he's the one filling in that voice. But then throughout the, the story, like in the middle, he starts thinking, is it a problem if they start talking back to you? <laughs> like yeah. you're not the one putting voices right. in there. He's like, whoa, I'm actually having real conversations <laughs> yeah. with these things. Okay, so basically, what is order? Obviously, you're uh, more into these uh, <laughs> characters, like these comic oh, book man. superhero type of deals. More than me, more so than myself. I grew up with brothers, so I'm aware of these types of yeah. characters and TV shows and things like that. But for you, like this is kind of like equivalent of what exactly? Or was this a real show? Well, there's a guy called Maddie that owns Defender Comics, who's kind of like a father figure to Tommy. He does mention it, I don't know if he caught it, in a certain part of his conversation with Tommy. He's like, it's not like it's some guy called He-Man, you know, oh, right. writing I mean, it. There's, yeah, there's definitely a lot of references to <laughs> real life characters and shows and movies and things. But that's what I compare it as. He-Man. Oh, I see. Because He-Man is masculine and Skulligar is... Oh, the dude in the purple thing. That's the mask Skeletor, guy. I Skeletor, think. Skeletor. Ah, yeah, see, and they I'm... have their little sidekicks and, ah, okay. of course, She-Ra. Okay. So he does hint at it. I was like, hey, that... that I was, putting two and two together. Yeah, I was a little like, wait, I'm not exactly sure what this is supposed to kind of mirror. So, okay, now I get it. Yeah. I get it. But it is, what it, What do you call it, like a 1980s nostalgia? Yeah, like, I loved like mm -hmm. a lot of the references I actually did get because I either watched the movies, the shows, or mm -hmm. seen the commercials or things like that. Yeah, there's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Zelda, Metroid... Right. The Goonies mm -hmm. and Nintendo, all kinds yeah, of Yeah, it just fits into that 1980s vibe. Going back to Tommy. So it's coming of age. He's, and it's funny because it's his last day in sixth grade. The last five minutes of school, 
He's waiting patiently. There's a quote from the book that says, this was the last day of elementary school and Summer waited outside like an idling ice cream truck. So just the way the author puts words together, like Summer waits like an idling like ice cream truck, that just tells you so much. I know. Because I could remember those days. I know, just... you're like, man, I know the <laughs> Paleta man is outside. I got some change on me. I'm ready to go get some ice cream and oh. have this day be over. Mm -hmm. I know, yeah. And even though summer is only, what, two months, it just, I don't know, it took me back to riding bicycles, <laughs> hopping curves, and hanging out at the arcade, the video store which Tommy does, going down a hill really fast. I think he hit warp speed one time. Oh my God. I, I <laughs> yeah. love it so much. Like, I was never yeah. a young boy, but I felt like I, I really lived a piece of that. It, it's pretty awesome. So it starts off awesome. Just summer break, last day of sixth grade. For him, sixth grade started that junior high change, which for him was a big change for some reason you don't notice anyone you can't find anyone am i gonna fit in where do i sit am These... i still friends with the people <laughs> i was friends with people change yeah. which happens in the book and made me like so sad yeah i felt like he yeah. was just like he was completely himself 100 percent, and his friends were changing for whatever reasons which is life i get that mm -hmm. but he's just like this nerdy sweet kid he's just like dude, I just want to play with these toys and, like, pretend play and, like, I don't know, live my life. What's so wrong with that? Having to grow up, start this new school that he he recalls it looked like a prison with his brick walls and cement <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's a rough start to junior high. And I remember when he was going home one time, his parents were yelling when he was about to open the door. And he started thinking, like, some wonderful place of escape um, where friends called back and parents didn't yell. Funny, but at the same time, pretty sad. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of people could definitely relate to a lot of the social, Ooh. like, school life a lot mm -hmm. of like the personal home life with parents and things like that because all parents fight varying degrees so i think everyone could relate on that level and understand uh, even on a visceral level just how he was feeling and how he's going through all these moments in his life and how it's affecting him and you're totally like <laughs> man this poor kid dude yeah and he... you're in his mind so you know how he feels and you're like oh I'm with you. I get you. Yeah, and he even mentioned that his body felt like it didn't belong to him, and he didn't like that. So he's obviously going through puberty also. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he's like, what's happening with me, man? I don't like it. Uh, but Tommy, in short, he likes to read comics, likes to read magazines, likes to read fantasy, sci-fi books, watch the same movies. He mentions a toxic adventure and that gave him nightmares. So cute. So just a typical, like, 80s kid. I know, little um, kid. So but cute. When he starts junior high, like home life, parents are arguing more, close to divorce. He even starts to kind of like a girl, Miranda, yeah. you know, a little, so he's like, hey, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. Why what am I feelings? shy around her? Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, so home life starts getting rough, so they start, they start uh, ignoring him because they're trying to get at each other and make, I don't know, it's weird, his parents are weird, but. They're not weird, they're yeah. adults with issues and problems. Yeah. Well, they start arguing and trying to hold their marriage together, but in doing that, it's they're also fighting each other, and all of the negativity is going to Tommy. So he's feeling ignored. Then his best friend, Evan, he ignores him last day of school in sixth grade, and then he just starts talking smack to him whenever he sees him, doesn't want to hang out. So he lost his best friend, parents are ignoring him, they're always fighting, there's no dinner. Um, Aww, I don't, he's, he's always talking about TV dinners, his right? His poor frozen hungry man <laughs> yeah, dinners. Hungry man I'm dinners. like, this poor child. Yeah. I yeah. remember when she was, his mom was like, don't worry, now you'll have more cooked meals. And I'm like, girl, where were you at before? Yeah. You didn't have a job before? Why couldn't you just come home and cook him a meal? Even if you didn't want to cook for your husband, who you hated, apparently. Like, just cook yeah. for your child some frozen... <laughs> meals that's rude and some days he'll go home it's like man i hope there's mac and cheese and some chicken <laughs> on the side. no he's like i just want some like real cooked food whatever it is so it's it's funny and sad it's, it's just <laughs> yeah. crazy and even maddie like maddie he's a rastafarian guy with like dreadlocks under his you know rastafari hat mm -hmm. he just says he looks like a he would 
fit in at a carnival because he has like a goatee, <laughs> round rim glasses, and just his look. It's, I don't know, it's insane to him, I guess. And that his place always smells funny and he likes incense all the time. Ugh. Wonder why. Innocent children, <laughs> I love them. Yeah, but Maddie, he, he plays a big part, I think, in this book because he's kind of like another conscience, uh, father figure, right. or parent figure in general. Yeah, I mean, they definitely have similar yeah. likes, so it's mm. easy to kind of get on the same kind of wavelength you know when you guys are into the same stuff he was a young kid once too he you know he went to school he probably yeah. was bullied too he seems kind of nerdy himself so uh, you know he probably went through similar issues so he can mm. definitely relate and it gave him some great advice that i'm gonna remember myself don't take even for a moment for granted enjoy your childhood while time is still on your side and tommy's like what the hell is he talking about this guy's he's 30 you know he's older than 30 and that kind of i took that to heart yeah because <laughs> i'm Jeez, over 30 and i don't think i'm that old yeah and you also know? it kind of i feel like time works a little differently when you're mm -hmm. younger i remember days being so long <laughs> and like you know just everything was just so took took forever like for my next birthday to come just was forever mm -hmm. so i feel like as we get older time really speeds up for us but it's always it's, hard to tell know. kids you know life stuff <laughs> they're like man you're just old be quiet but i think yeah. honestly i think tommy's super smart because there are times throughout the book because he mm -hmm. does grow as as a person as a character throughout the book yeah. i think he starts to come to like realizations ah i see what my teacher was trying to tell me like enjoy your summer like mm -hmm. savor every moment like what she said at the beginning of the book and then what <laughs> Mrs. Uh, maddie's advice was yeah enjoy your childhood like every time we talked about an adult it seemed like the charlie brown like wah, 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 yeah. wah, wah. <laughs> but he did think about everything and he tried to understand it in s you know, as the book, the story went along, as he his life went along, he started understanding why they said certain things. Going back to the Order of Cosmic Champions, because that <laughs> plays a huge part in this. Yeah, that really does. So there's a contest for Order of Cosmic Champions. Create your own OOCC character and win. And Tommy was like, and win what? Well, I don't really care. I just want to win. Like, he could draw. He's always, you know, sketching. Normally, he would go with a good guy, right? But because of the bullying, because of the parents near divorcing or divorcing, not divorcing, he's like... Yeah, his personality kind of has over changed. This. Yeah, Starts getting like, dark. Yeah, he's like, you know, mm -hmm. no more Mr. Nice Guy. Oh. Like, let's go to the dark side. And that's when the characters start talking back to him. He thinks he's going crazy. He starts seeing things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think he definitely uses his mm -hmm. imagination and these fantasy characters or this fantasy world mm -hmm. as like a coping mechanism for himself yeah. with all these things that are going on. I mean, and it's to me, I feel like it's super justified i'm like he's yeah. he's going through a lot emotionally you know mentally why i mean go ahead man you need your um, your imaginary life to make you feel some comfort depending on the situation skulligar would talk to him and give him advice or yeah masculine. but skulligar was always the like the devil on his shoulder like, yeah. you can mention that and then fierce <laughs> phantos was always like oh. the good angel on his shoulder like he always had mm -hmm. those two kind of battling and then they do throughout the yeah. book there's battles and like this amazing stuff <laughs> and, he, and he's looking around like why is no one else seeing this i know there's stuff <laughs> happening guys what is going on no one's yeah. freaking out but me i love it yeah so his imagination is running wild but at the same time it's so realistic the way it's written you could the dialogue. picture it right yeah i truly this. feel like all the dialogue yeah. which some of it's hilarious and i have to <laughs> quote some of the humor that follows throughout the book is great especially with these fantasy characters all the jokes yeah <laughs> like the jokes. dialogue i feel like is real real shows that are out there like it's it's Serious. spot on honestly they could just read the book and create the show yeah like it's definitely spot on to like a fantasy show. It's not just for kids, Accurate. young adults. Right. Like we enjoyed it. Yeah. So it was great. So when back at the comic book shop, Maddie notices that he's feeling down. So he gives him the latest edition of Order of the Cosmic Champions magazine, where he shows him there's a contest. Hints at him, you're gonna you know enter. That's what kicks off like the next chapter in his life. So he ends up creating his own character, Mechanical, right? Mechanical. How do you say it? Mechanical. I think so. It's like a. Mechanical. It's like a robot and a ghoul mixed together. Yeah, which when he yeah. explained it, I thought it was like a super legit character. I was like, hey, that's pretty solid. 
you know? And then... Yeah, it reminded me of Krang. Of who? Krang. See? In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like uh. the, the mechanic part, the mechanic ghoul is the shell. He's the, the robot. Uh. Where Krang, that... Skeletor? Not Skeletor. Skeletor? S- Skeletor. Yeah, see, it's, it's about the same. Just a little <laughs> twist. Like, when he gets defeated in battle, he goes into Mechanic Ghoul. Right. And that's like another show and right. uses that. So in between entering the contest and mm-hmm. finally getting the results from the contest... Which took weeks. There was lots of... More bullying. Yeah, more bullying. I think his parents did divorce. Dad's more, living no, in more motels. separations with yeah. his parents, things like that. So, you know, a lot of depressing things. And then the winner of the contest is announced, which I was, I think I was just as sure as he was that he would win. (laughs) I was like, of course he's going to win. That's what this whole book is about, yeah. right? Like, yeah. this is his thing. This is his moment. He even had bed sheets of this OOCC and everything. His yeah. birthday party was based on that. Yeah. He was always sketching the characters. So Tommy, he goes on. So he decides, you know, I've had enough of this horrible stuff in my life. I, I This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take charge of my life. I'm going to go on this journey, find this kid, and make my dreams come true that my character is going to be made into an action figure. <laughs> So that starts season two. He goes on his bike, his mongoose, his green mongoose, yeah. which is like his chariot, but, his... Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you know, a young boy needs to have something in his life, his oh, prized wow. possession, and it's your bike that takes you everywhere. That's your freedom. And then that, it leads me to a quote I want to read, and it's exactly that chapter. <laughs> <laughs> it's I love what he says this because I, I, I feel the intensity i feel the emotion when he says Mm. this it's just two sentences he says this trip wasn't about vengeance it was about healing and i was like that's true bro so much emotion is packed Mm. in that this like this is going to like change him this journey he's going on with his amazing bike and his amazing backpack and all his cool little (laughs) patches yeah his patches on his 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 jacket and his pins all his what did he have he had a nintendo power patch (laughs) a ghostbusters the double o double c fan club a delorean he had a delorean Mm. patch for god's sakes like that is so cool like when i envision tommy i'm like he's just such a cool nerdy kid like i am so all about tommy he's awesome (laughs) yeah he is a cool kid but he he had a rough patch in his life (laughs) but now that's why he's on his journey and he's on his journey to healing yeah which like, is what a crazy. smart kid dude like he's like no this is about healing but he's in branchville ohio mm-hmm. and he needs to get to new york and he's yeah. like i don't know how how, how i'm gonna, gonna get, get there, there but i'm gonna get there hey can i ride my bike he thought about riding his bike over there i know talk about determination <laughs> this kid was about ready to pedal his feet off yeah but it's it's quite a journey we're not gonna talk about it but he goes on, yeah. on his journey and he goes through a lot it's it's crazy and his 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 imagination imagination Mm. what he sees it builds up it gets more intense i know the action sequences are great (laughs) they are fantastic and i'm just like perhaps they were real perhaps they were but if you know they were just amazing yeah, because Maddie at the comic shop does talk about alternate universes. Yeah, which I thought was super and, cool. Yeah, and that gets him thinking. He's like, like well, perhaps it is all real <laughs> then. Yeah. It's not just made up in my mind. Mm-hmm. But I love the humor. Like, just kid jokes. You know, like little boy jokes. So, Tommy and Fierce Phantos. So, this is like the good angel on um, mm-hmm. Tommy's shoulder most of the time. It was a good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's going with him on this journey and they kind of have like this banter back and forth where they just say (laughs) boy Uh, stuff and it's so funny and to me it's so realistic. Like one thing he's like... Like that joke when you were younger, like, oh, so funny, I forgot to laugh. Like, oh my God. When I read that, I was like, oh my Jesus, I said that a few times. I remember my brother saying that and thinking it was so hilarious. Like, oh, that was so funny, I forgot to laugh. Like, and rolling your eyes. And then when they were in the alley, they were like just explaining like, you know, stuff about the alley. And he was saying, smells. yeah, he was like, the dumpster smells like a rotten fish fart. Phantos <laughs> nodded solemnly. Good one. And I'm just like, I could see that happening. Like, I felt that conversation. I was like, oh, this little boy is so ridiculous. Yeah, they have their moments. Yeah, which reminds me of uh, uh, this guy, Casey Jones, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Part 1, the movie. 
where Donatello and him are in the garage fixing oh, that yeah. truck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're just going back and forth, like, insulting each other. Right. Going up the alphabet, like, dog breath, egg face. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what are we on? Yeah. <laughs> and then they continue. <laughs> so that that's the kind of relationship they have. I know. It's just imaginary. It's so funny. But it's just like hilarious really enjoyed this book there's sad parts yeah. crazy parts so the Shit ending part. we're not going to say what the ending is but the ending i felt like it was really left open for a second book season three like i could be totally wrong but like it gave me like that cliffhanger vibe where i was like mm. whoa something could be coming yeah which it's... i would totally read it because i really enjoyed this book it was funny and I, it's just super relatable and just so cute. I loved it. Yeah. And the cover is amazing. Mm -hmm. It just, it yeah. reminded me, like, super 80s vibe. Yeah. Like, I love it. The little action figures, the mongoose machine, or the yeah. green machine, yeah. as you call it. It definitely gives me, like, poltergeist vibes with the kids <laughs> sitting in front of the TV. Yeah. But, like, super amazing. I love it. Mm -hmm.